Hi, this is Elkin from EF in Lotus Dragon. I'm going to be dropping the Ella swap out of this DA. Um, it's not really going to be a how to. I'm just going to basically document uh, my process. Uh, this is my first time doing it myself. So, right now I'm just going to drain the fluid and uh, basically disconnect all the hoses and connectors from the from the engine. So, like this isn't how to, this is my first time. I know more or less how to do this, so enjoy watching me fuck up. Shit. So right now I'm just gonna drain the radiator. So after about maybe a day or two trying to take this axle off, I got the thing called PB Blast.
Blaster, some sort of WD-40. And I got a um, screwdriver and I shoved it in between the rotor. And uh, I took off the handle off of the um, off of the jack and put it onto a breaker bar. And the only way I could get it off was by doing that and just uh, lifting up the jack. And that's uh, that's how I got this uh, bolt loosened um, thing I've been trying to do this for two days and it's the only method that work. Alright, so I wanted to give a little update. Um, I pretty much got all the hoses. Sorry, all the electrical connections and everything. <sighs> Taken off of my car, I took off the power steering pump. This little bracket right here. Sorry. Damn it. Little bracket that goes right here. And that's basically how I took off the power steering pump. Next, I took off the AC lines. I don't really think I'm going to take off the compressor off. I'm going to likely sell it with the engine. Took off all the plugs for the fans. And uh, this, uh, what do you call it, the heat shield? It's kind of a fan that's to take off, so hopefully I'll be able to take it off. I'm not going to lie, I did kind of cut all the connectors because I know I could sell all the connections piece by piece for maybe like 60 bucks online, about $20 each piece. Um, if you do it that way, make sure you don't cut off the dizzy. Dizzy wires that actually go on the dizzy, you probably cut here off and it'll be fine because I actually had to purchase mine to convert my uh, EF from uh, dual point fuel injection to multiple fuel injection. I think I paid like $25 for that for free shipping. So if you want to do that, um, like I said, I just cut it because um, I mean, I'm going to be junking this car anyways. So um, I already got this axle already taken off. So uh, I'm going to show you some tricks. I used to take this axle off. So you're going to um, need the jack. And um, lift up the rotor by, uh, I, forgot, I don't remember if it's the ball joint or I, I forgot exactly what I'm for it, but um, I'm get the right fix. I basically lifted it up by this, um, this bolt. I'm not sure if you can see, you probably can't. Uh, this bolt right here. I just lifted it up, or you can do it by the rotor if you want to, but I mean, I don't really care because this car's gonna go to the junkyard anyways. So just separate those two. Um, I basically stuck in a half inch um, socket right there, as you can see, in between here. Let me get some lights. Mm. Let's see if I can get so I put in the socket between there and at this point um, all you really need to do is hit the socket in and it'll release um, I don't know what it was. basically release this part from this part so I'm pretty sure once I get the jack out of here, we'll be able to understand what I'm saying. So, um, if you don't lift up the jack, it won't actually leave enough space for you to stick the socket in. So that's the whole point of re uh, releasing the jack. And I've actually seen videos where they leave the bolt in, or like an extension, and then drop the jack. And the basically, the jack going down will pinch this pressure. And as you're pinching it, basically the, the socket will just kind of make the, this part pop from the... I what it's called. I want to say ball joint, but I think this is actually the ball joint. So, um, I'm gonna hit it with the sledgehammer. I'm pretty sure it'll pop just how I put it up. Just two hits. That's all it took last time. And, yep, it's separated. See this gap right here? Oh, I need some fucking lights right there. You see that gap? So basically, you're gonna stick the suck in right where my finger was at. Uh, let me see if I can get the left. So, you see that gap right there? Stick it in right through here with the half inch. And it'll pop. And I'm gonna just drop the jack. <clears throat> Give me a second. So, drop the jack. From here, basically, I have to just lift it up. 
lift this part up and you're done. I've seen people just hit this bolt up, but I couldn't do it. Or they hit this part and like it basically shakes loose in your head like a big pop. And that was it. Um, just a little tip on how to do it. And that's it. After this, you just have to lift it up and that's it. I'll give you an update um, once I'm going to take apart the fork and then how to take off the axle. Alright, so right now we're going to be trying to take off the shift fork. Sorry, the fork. I forgot what it's called. The suspension fork. I don't remember what it's called. Basically this part so that way you can pop off the axle out of here. So what you're going to need is uh, there's going to be two bolts right here, one right here. And then one right, one right there, and you can use a two seventeen millimeters, either a socket wrench and a breaker bar, or two socket wrenches, or just a regular wrench and a socket wrench, or however you want to do it. And uh, you're going to be turning this uh, lefty loosey, so it's going to be that way. And uh, what I use is the socket wrench right here on this side, uh, so that way um, it'll catch it. The other bolt, sorry, the other nut from um, moving, so just moving this side, and the other side won't really move. Um, these ones, my passenger side was really hard. This one's pretty easy. So, I mean, that's basically that for this part. The whole point we're doing this is just to take off uh, the fork, so that way the um, axle will pop off. Because, um, I mean, it's impossible to get the axle to pop off. Because these um, axles are so wide, it won't fit through here. On my EF, the 91 hatchback, I had no problem fitting it through the ship fork. But for some reason, I guess uh, Acura just made their sticker. Because of the, the torque, I guess. So, um, I'll give you an update when we're done. And uh, go on to the next step. Alright, so once you get the other knot off, um, I just hammer it off. And then just pull it apart with the, some bias grips. Um... Sometimes when you take off this nut right here, sorry, yeah, yeah, screw right there. Um, here, where's it? Let me give you an example. Right here. It's kind of long, so um, in my EF, when I took it out, it was such a pain in the ass to take it out. And once I finally got it out, it gave like a big drop, like the fork shifted from like, I mean, for the EF, for the ADA, it didn't shift, but for my EF, it shifted way down. And uh, it was a bitch to get this bolt off once it once it got past this hole. And uh, it basically got, we get stuck right here, so what we'd have to do is just jack the, the rotor up and just pull it out. Or the other method we tried once was um, getting um, an extension and just sticking it on the other side and just hammering it through. One problem with that is that the extension will get stuck, so if that happens. Um, you can also get some vice grips, clamp it on here, and just get a hammer and just hit it that way. And that way nothing gets stuck, but it might be like a big drop, so just get ready for that. If it does happen to you. So yeah, just pop that off. There's a nut um, that goes along with it. I believe it was a 17 millimeter. We're just gonna take off this bolt. It's a 14 millimeter. So just take it off. We're gonna take it off. Don't lose anything from there. Um, how do I do this? It's gonna wiggle down. So just push it down. That was it. And uh, maneuver it off. It's because I have the camera and I also have to kind of like adjust the light so just maneuver it out there you go put that aside from here all we really need to do is um pull this apart um and there you go, your axle's free um, as far as being out of here on the rotor side. Uh, the transmission side, I've actually never done this on a DA, but um, it should have like a holder for the axles. I've actually never done it on a B series, so. I know there's a, there's a, like a, a driver's side on it. Wait, this is like a terrace bracket that bolts up somewhere up here.
And then uh, basically all you need to do is take like a, a pry bar and just stick it in between the transmission. And uh, what is this called? Main shaft? I forgot what this shaft is called. But basically the axle ends right here and it has another connector that on that way that connects into the transmission. Um, they're different from the 90 to 93 to the 94 and up models. So there's a male and female side. This is a... Uh, and this one's the female right here. It's a male side. So, uh, I mean, I gotta get under and try to exact, see exactly how you take it off because I have actually never done one on a B-Series motor. But it's pretty much the same. So, there gonna be two bolts that are holding this, um, two or three bolts that are holding this uh, half shaft. That's just called half shaft up. And then from there, you're just gonna take a pry bar. Yeah, right there. Uh, once you get out of here, it's a lot easier to see. So you're going to take a pry bar. Let's see where you pry. It's really hard to see. So you're just going to take a pry bar right there. Is that it? Yeah, right there. A pry bar in between the black part and the metal part, and just pull apart. And let me see where the, where the screws are at. Yeah, see, I see one screw over here. Mm. How many bolts are there? I think it's only one bolt. It looks like only one bolt. Oh, They're right below. Basically, the only one I'm zoomed in on. So that one. As far as I mean, as far as I know. So, so I'm gonna try to take those out, and I'll show you exactly where they're at and how to take off the um axle out of the transmission. I'll give you an update when I'm done. Alright, so I took off the axle already, and this is what I was talking about, the male-female side. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you guys already know this, but I said the DA ones have um, a male side that goes into a transmission and a female side where the axle connects to. But the DC2 ones have a male side and a male side to where the, um, basically there's this, this doesn't have female side on this side, it just has a another male right here and there's a hole right here that you stick it into. So... This is actually from this car. This is an extra um, half shaft I had um, when I purchased previously. When I was piecing together the swap before I bought the car. So it's actually going to be three bolts piecing it together. Um, I only got one right now. I'm just, it's pretty hard to see. I'm still looking for the other two. Basically, um, what it's going to be in order to pry these apart, you're going to need um, a pry bar or something like this. The curve at the end. Uh, I've never done it with a screwdriver, I've said this pry bar, so I don't really know how to do it anything like with that other than a pry bar. So basically, there's going to be like a little itty bitty gap, and what you're going to do is um push this side. And then it'll basically pop out, and you'll be able to pull it out. Um, once you do this, you want to replace these uh these little rings. It basically, it supposedly holds it in place, but... um uh, I don't know, I've never actually had to use axles. This is my first uh, use axle, so... Uh, so yeah, you're going to do the three bolts, and then the same method you're going to do is, um, pry off into here, and just push that way. So, I'm going to try to get in that original half shaft out of the car, and then I, I need to purchase a punch set to get the shift linkage out. Or I might try to do it with some, so basically everything I have, anything I have laying around. And then from there, we just need to take off the four, I believe, four motor mounts and then we'll be able to lift the transmission out. I'll give you an update when I'm done with the here. Alright so I wanted to give a quick little update. <clears throat> I did take the power steering pump off. That's where I mounted one of the mounting points I guess to lift up the engine. There's another one. I put the other two on the transmission side. <clears throat> I just took off the shift linkage. I'll show you a video of how I did that. I took off, uh, disconnected the bottom part of the exhaust. Fixed the, the light. Um, I took off the dizzy. I'm gonna have to put it on the B18B1 anyways, I have. And I mounted it right there. Um, the rear transmission mount. 
I got to, uh, well, I mean, the bolt for the wrench transition mount, bracket, whatever you want to call it, um, by removing the fuel filter and uh, this little, I don't know what exactly this is called. So, I mean, you just have to lift it up from here, and it has, like, this little tube that connects into, um, it looks like the wheel well and just pops out, so... That was that. I didn't take off the exhaust manifold. I'm mean, sorry, the intake manifold yet. Um, I don't think I will have to. But, um, I mean, if it's probably easier for me because I'm cutting up the harness because I don't need it. I already actually, I'm going to be using it to convert another, possibly a Wago van or a CRX if I ever get one in the future. Then do the multi port fuel injection. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to take off. The front engine motor mount and lift it up and then um, just take off these other ones on the side I really don't have anyone helping me so I mean I just want to give you a little little how-to on how to do that I also purchased them um, I believe they're U, U joints or oh, I forgot what they're called they're like swivel extensions and to get the bottom one I had to actually connect two to get enough slack to get it in there. And this um, PB blaster, that's what I use, I don't use WD-40, I use PB blaster. And that's how I got the front one off. And then from um, here on out, I just have to take off the other two on the side. Should be easy. I just lift it out and um, put it on this tarp, and that's it. So I'll give you an update uh, when I really take a, uh, whenever I start lifting the engine, since I don't really have anyone helping me or to film it. Alright, so I finally got the motor out. It's a huge pain in the ass to get it out. Um, you're looking at it, the reverse side, so there's intake manifold, so normally you'd be looking at it this way. Again, this way. Something like that. So, hardest part for me was, um, Getting this fucking the motor mount that goes right here, and that would go right there on this side. So passenger side motor mount, yeah, because it would hit it, um, right up here. I would be able to get it out. I took off um, two bolts of the sub. No, sorry, I think it's called the cross. I don't know what this is called, but basically the part that connects to the. The subframe, I think it was called. I took out the two bolts on that side. And I took off one and I lowered it. And at that point, I was able to get the uh, the rear transmission bracket, the T bracket. I think it's uh, right around here. Well, I believe right here. So that's the only way I was able to take it out. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, the shift linkage was just too hard. Except that. Oh yeah, it's 10 millimeter connecting that, and then there's another piece of the shift linkage. I think I have to go with like a 1032 punch, so you will need a punch. Uh, let me see if I can get it. Uh, yeah, see over there. Yeah, so, yeah, a little piece right over there. You just have to pull the plastic back. Ah, uh, there's a little metal. It's called a bitch pin. You get a 10 millimeter. I think I have like a 1032 punch to take it out. <sighs> That's too big. <sighs> I got a 316th. I think that's the one I use. Okay, is a quarter punch or the 316 punch. I believe the one you're supposed to use is, is 10 millimeter. <sighs> so I also took off the dizzy just to make it easier. I also took off the radiator, all the fans, everything. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So now I have to take out the transmission, flywheel, pressure plate, pressure plate clutch, all that. 
and transfer all that. Oh, sorry, I also had to take off the starter. I forgot to take, take everything off, so I got to take off. Basically, take off this transmission and put it on my B18B I have. Got another transmission. I mean, sorry, motor over here. Long walk. So I'm gonna convert this one to a OB0. Just put on the put on the distributor, the injectors, and then the ECU out of that one. And then I have to um, swap over all these little parts, like um, the flywheel, alternator. Um, that's it. I'm um, pretty much for now. So I'll probably make another video of me transferring all the parts from that motor onto this one. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this is somewhat helpful. This isn't in it like a how-to. It's more like a documentary. So, I mean, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, hopefully by the end of December it'll be swapped into my little red Ronda. Which she looks like right now. Alright, thank you. Hope you enjoy.